beyond the wardrobe. Childlike wonder in relation to Christian faith. It is a sweltering summer day. The kind of day that dries and burns your skin the moment you step outside. My brothers and I sit talking outside on the porch, equipped with cold drinks, wishing for nothing more than a pool and an extra bottle of sunscreen. Suddenly, one of my nieces bursts out from behind a bush, the others quickly following behind. Undaunted by the weather, she tugs on my hand excitedly, with the others quickly following suit. Come help, Sarah! Come help, she squeals, pointing back towards the bush. There's lions in the garden. Lions, shriek the other two. The eldest once again looks up at me, slightly more serious. You have to help us beat them, she says confidentially. In the age we live in today, maturity and being an adult is flaunted as glorious and desirable. Growing up and all the advantages that come with it are pushed in the media as fun and are encouraged even in the youngest children. Drinking, sex, and drugs are pushed until children even as young as 12 years old are losing their innocence and wonder in exchange for the real world. At the fault of the sex secular culture, children are told that party life is desirable and that their imagination is foolish. This kind of thinking truly began its culmination in the Age of Enlightenment, which drew focus off of God and onto the measure of man, giving him the authority of reason in every aspect of life. According to William Bristow, a professor of philosophy whose studies focus on the ideologies of Immanuel Kant, the main premise of the Enlightenment was, quote, the process of undertaking to think for oneself, to employ and rely on one's own intellectual capacities in determining what to believe and how to act, unquote. When this change of focus occurred, men began to place more value on himself and what he wanted. As a result of this culture, many Christians are losing their childlike wonder and falling from the faith for the temptations of this world. And many of us are losing our childlike faith when we experience the troubles of the world. The Bishop of London realized the trouble that our age is heading towards, saying, quote, I have to say, that when future generations look back on us, they will say that we were very careful about abusing bodies. But what about the amount of filth, innuendo, and pornography they allow to slew us through the mind of our young people, through advertising the internet, the stimulation of sexual appetites of young people in their dress? I don't hear people thinking that is much of a problem. Unquote. Sadly, the reason that this culture is allowed to slew us through the perceptions of youth and adult today is because, it's, because it is no longer considered wrong or profane. Even worse, government attempts to influence children, taking them from their parents and teaching them what is right and wrong before they can determine it for themselves. Because of this secular culture, children are told to believe whatever they are taught placing a distrust in any, distrust in any instruction by their parents. Now the, quote, state assumes the role once occupied by parents, for fear that they might be exposed to some heresy like conventional sex education. With no wall between the child and the state, government is free to push ideas like, quote, promiscuity is permitted and prudence prohibited, furthering their corruption and abolishing purity. This, unfortunately, is the struggle in many Christian homes. Because the children are influenced by their education, and the parents are influenced by the sea of commercialism, there is hardly room for wonder or awe. Children are growing up taught that their parents are wrong, placing a distrust in any instruction, like the Bible. And adults are simply struggling to rediscover the faith they once held as a child. Because of this problem, Christians are no longer able to hold to their values, virtues, or beliefs. These issues are why childlike faith is necessary to maintain true Christian faith. Merriam-Webster defines childlike as, quote, resembling, suggesting, <coughs> or appropriate to a child or childhood, especially marked by innocence, trust, 
and ingenuousness. It defines faith as something that is believed especially with a strong conviction. Therefore, childlike faith should be defined as something that is believed especially with strong conviction, marked by innocence, trust, and ingenuousness. There are three basic reasons that childlike faith resembles is related to Christian faith. First, childlike faith opens our eyes to the meaning and purpose of Christian faith. Second, lack of childlike faith strips us of the ability to understand Christian faith. <coughs> and third, this misunderstanding leads to a rejection of faith. First, Childlike faith opens our eyes to the meaning and purpose of Christian faith. The simple faith of a child allows us to accept the seemingly impossible while still holding to the laws of nature. As G.K. Chesterton says, according to fairy tales, quote, you cannot imagine two and one not making three. But you can easily imagine trees growing fruit. You can imagine growing candlesticks or tigers hanging on by the tail. Because of this childlike faith, children are able to believe in the miracles of Bible and the laws of logic as equally factual. This is because as a child, we hold infinite awe and wonder of the world, not simply facts and what we believe to be knowledge. When we have this childlike faith, we are enabled to understand the Christian faith more and more in all aspects of reality. As N.D. Wilson says, God is always speaking to us, and it takes a sense of wonder to hear him. God is continually speaking to us, but not in a way that we view speech. He speaks in actions and objects and sounds. Quote, tree, God says, and there is one. But he doesn't just say the word tree. He says the tree itself. He needs no shortcut. He's not merely calling it into existence, though his voice creates. His voice is its existence. Unquote. How could we, with our facts and scientific experiments and equations alone, possibly be able to hear God speaking on so many levels without the imagination he has given to us from the time we are born. He equips us with the ability to see the world as he truly made it. He equips us with the ability to believe in a God who speaks in matter. Second, not only does Christianity open, does childlike faith open our eyes to the true meaning and purpose of Christian faith, but a lack of childlike faith strips us of our ability to understand it. Just as the simple faith of a child allows us to believe in the miracles of the Bible and the laws of logic is equally factual, so also does adopting a materialistic worldview lead us to expect something always to occur simply because it has before, creating a skepticism about anything that cannot be proved by experimentation. Polly unknowingly proves this in C.S. Lewis's The Magician's Nephew, when Diggory postulates that there might be criminals in an abandoned house by saying, Daddy thought it must be the drains. Pooh, Diggory childishly and correctly replies. Grown-ups are always thinking of uninteresting explanations. Diggory is giving us an idea that is penetrating into Christian ideals all through childlike faith. It is enabling us to believe in the tenets of childlike faith beyond observable repetition. Childlike faith knows that though most wardrobes usually hold clothes, that does not mean that there is not a world behind some other wardrobe. It knows that though the dead do not usually rise, that does not mean they cannot. When we are presented with this materialistic worldview, we are able to carry it to its logical outward. If we adopt this materialistic worldview, we are assuming that we are expecting something to occur simply because it has consistently before. If we are assuming this, then we are assuming that our foreknowledge and our present knowledge are the only ways to determine truth. 
Once we have reached this conclusion, we have removed all room for faith from the argument. Without faith, we cannot have Christianity, as it is the basis of our faith. Without this tenet of faith and childlike wonder, we are forced to either not think hard on our faith, but believe blindly, or to forsake it entirely. Not only does childlike faith open our eyes to the meaning and purpose of Christian faith, and a lack strip us of our ability to understand it, but this misunderstanding leads to a rejection of Christian faith. A large, a large saying of Christianity is, in the world, but not of the world. Childlike faith gives us this protection. The ability to remain in the world and observe its sin while still retaining innocence. And, if not always innocence, then most certainly repentance. If we do not have these basic tenets of childlike faith, what is to stop us from being com becoming completely immersed in a secular culture? What is to stop the cynicism which spreads so rampantly through secular culture today? Sadly, the loss of this tool leads to a rejection of faith. As stated in the previous argument, a materialistic worldview leads someone to believe something only to occur if it can be proved by experimentation. Now, if someone cannot believe something on faith and has no logical reason to believe it, then he will logically conclude that it does not exist. This is the problem in Christian faith, in, when we do not hold childlike faith. If we do not have a reason to believe it, then we will obviously reject it. Now, this does not mean that Christianity is illogical. There are many ways to conclude Christianity. But it is the truth of love, not found in any other religion, yet so easily found in a child, that truly defines Christian faith. <coughs> My three arguments so far are that childlike faith opens our eyes to the meaning and purpose of Christian faith. Lack of it strips us of our ability to understand it, and this misunderstanding leads to a rejection of faith. However, some may not believe in my arguments. Some may say that we are called to grow into adulthood in Christ. They may quote the verse by Paul in Corinthians when he rejects the Corinthian church, saying, quote, I gave you milk. Not solid food, for you are not ready for it. Indeed, you are still not ready. How are we to be childlike when Paul chastises us for being children? However, childlike faith and growth in Christ, different as they may seem, are not contradictory. Childlike growth is not the same as worldly growth. Christian faith is furthered and enriched by childlike faith and crippled by the world's idea of maturity. Christ childlike faith allows us to believe in the miracles of the Bible, which is most certainly a growth of Christ. Christ even exhorts us to be like children, saying, quote, I tell you the truth, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Unquote. Some may say that my entire thesis is unnecessary, simply because our culture already embodies child childlike tenets, embracing juvenility and telling children to rebel. One can't help but notice that children are constantly turning against their families and trying to live life unhampered by age. The culture of today is nothing but juvenile. However, juvenility is not the subject of my arguments. The whole culture of juvenility is to rebel to do what you are told not to do, and to expect everything to be handed to you like you deserve it. Childlike faith is humble and unassuming. The entire premise of juvenility is to get old enough to do what you want and to rebel against authority. The entire premise of childlike faith is to hold existence in awe, to view everything as a gift, Childlike faith does not mean that you must be juvenile. In a way, 
it is harder to become like a child than it is to be an adult. It requires faith, which, according to Hebrews 11.1, 1, is, quote, being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. It requires work, patience, and trust. None of these qualities are urged by the idea of juvenile today. In fact, it is the complete opposite. Patience is something that is certainly not encouraged, as anything is at our fingertips at the touch of a keyboard. Neither is hard work. It is not even prized for its value anymore, but simply for its use. Work hard so you can go to a good college and get a good job. The entire premise is completely self-serving. This culture may be juvenile, but it most certainly does not have the tenets of childlike faith. None of these arguments, when truly examined, refute or weaken my arguments as a whole. My niece waits on, looking expectantly, becoming slightly impatient. I give a sigh of contentment and follow after them. After all, who am I to argue with lions in the garden? No matter what kind of lions they are, my nieces know without a doubt what is to be done with lions. They are to be defeated. As anyone knows, there will always be lions, and one must believe in them to be able to defeat them.